Sunday, everybody. It's December 2nd. Be quiet, phone. This radio station says if you have a song request, a Christmas song request that you want us to play, text us at this number and we'll play it. What about those of us who don't have a, t a cell phone to text? How the crap are we supposed to do ours then? You know, what if we want to hear a song too? Is it like you just have to have texting and that's it or what? It's really stupid. Went to the Trade Center and picked up our money from the auction stuff. Didn't make his money this, as much this time as it did last time I got. 41 25 but that's okay because I, had, I didn't have as much good stuff this time so I wasn't expecting to get much. And I was looking at the game guy in the back that I was considering taking manga books in to trade for stuff. And I was looking at the games to see if he had anything good. And I was asking him about this old one. Like, I don't know if you guys remember when the DS first came out. There was an old game that was always the display one at Walmart. And there was it was like a bunch of little mini games. And it was stuff like, uh, you'd have to like pluck hair out of skin. You'd have to tickle a nose until it sneezes. You had to unroll the toilet paper, that kind of weird stuff. And I, I had known it. And I thought that it was like a Wario thing. But he was saying that it was like some other thing. I don't remember what he had said it was now. And I was looking at the different games on the shelf. Because he didn't have it in a box. Because I knew that if I saw it, I would know it. And then I saw it on the thing because they had the Wario DIY. And then right like below it, one closer to me, was the Wario Touched. And that's what it was. And it was $10. And I asked him if he would be willing to hold the game because that's the one that I wanted and he said yeah that he would hold it for a week so dad took us home and then I got 10 manga books because it was a dollar each per trade and I took 10 books into him and I got the game so I've been playing it and it's so much fun but I don't know how to like save it or pause it in the middle so I had to like stop now before we had to go into China King or whatever I didn't want to be walking in there playing with my game or something okay go ahead now there's these three scientists that was teaching those monkeys how to pull corks out of bottles. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the monkey got really good at it. <laughs> One day he brought in an elephant. <laughs> they locked the elephant in the monkey in the room. And they put a big cork in the, in the elephant's butt. <laughs> and they fed it tons of X-lax. <laughs> What's that? They make you The monkey walks in there and pulls the cork out. It's a big explosion. All three scientists were dead. <laughs> The first one, the fireman came out and pulled the first scientist out. He died with a big smile on his face. Found the second scientist. He was dead with a big smile on his face. And the third one was just barely alive. The fireman says, How come your buddy's died with a smile on their face? And she's used to seeing that one trying to put that cork back in. Love you. Pilots. We were Polish pilots. Mm -hmm. Find a big jet airplane. Got four engines. So they took off and leave. And about an hour into the flight, PA comes out and says, uh, "We temporarily lost our first engine, but don't worry. The other three engines will get us where we got to go. We'll just be a half hour late." So we're flying along some more, and the second engine quit. We came back on and said the same thing. We have an engine problems, but the other two will carry us on in. Not to worry. We'll just be an hour late. So they're flying along. The third engine quit. They came back on. And says, We're still having more engine problems, but don't worry. The last engine is strong enough to take us on in. We're going to be an hour and a half late. So they're flying along, and the pilot to the other pilot and says, I hope we don't lose that last damn engine. We're going to be up here all day. <laughs> What's your fortune? <clears throat> Look around yourself. Your answer is nearby. My family. That one next to donkey, man. What? That one next to donkey. See if I can get this out without oh, without breaking the cookie. Yeah. Ah. Uh, and one-handed. Infinite patience produces immediate results. Well, that's certainly not for me. I don't have patience. <sighs> Give that one to so, yeah, you can see it. What's yours? 
You can go to the cashier, you need a, a carryout box for your noodle. Oh. <laughs> I'm back to the Trade Center, checking the rest of my books. Got two more. So we finally got Nintendogs, which I've been wanting. And then I got 50 Classic Games, which has a lot of fun looking like it's fun stuff. And it's got Mijong, which I'm really excited about. That was loud. I forgot I unplugged my speaker, so that was through the speaker. Um, computer. Laptop speakers, yeah. Never use them. But anyways, yeah. So I'm going to try out those ones. So I realized that earlier I never showed you Evie's fortune or dad's, and that was because Evie jumped up to go get ice cream right when I was trying to video her, and then she never opened her fortune, and then dad didn't either. They stuck them in their pockets and we left, so. Oh well. They were more excited to get back to the Trade Center to go get the other games. Um, I took in 29 books, well, 39 total. So I took in 39 books, I got 3 games, uh, 2 of them were 10 bucks, 1 was 15, and then I got $5 back from the guy as well. Technically I shouldn't have gotten that much. Uh, there were 4 extra books than there was the amount of money that I picked out of games. But, and I'm supposed to get like 75 cents for him for each piece for like cash, and he said, well I'll just give you $4. And he didn't have change, so he just gave me a 5. And I was like, are you sure? And he said, yeah, and I said, thank you. So whenever I get any more manga books that I don't want anymore like because I have more I just don't know I think I only have Chobits and um, Vampire Night now which I'm going to be keeping them um, but if I have any more games or anything that I don't want anymore I'll definitely take them to him on trade because that was way better Evie took in four games and she got two new ones so that was cool too so it was pretty good oh and earlier from the auction I don't know if I told you guys that I got forty-one twenty-five. I think I did tell you guys. Evie got a lot from it, and Dad got some too. So the guy wants us to bring in more stuff. We're like, we really don't have anything else to get rid of. <laughs> you know, we've already taken in all the stuff that we didn't want. I'm sure I'll take him, you know, another load before I move. Like, you know, me move to the UK. So I'll probably take it to him or whatever. Well, I'll have a moving sale, and then whatever doesn't sell, I'll take it to an auction. It'd be worth it. So. But I'd have like a lot of clothes and stuff, so I don't think that would sell that. I have other books to take to used bookstores, which there's the one up the road. But I don't like that one because I don't have anything. There's Book Nook somewhere. I don't know where that one is. There's another Look Books. There's John King in downtown Detroit. But I don't know if I really want to go there because I don't really have any like old or like rare books or whatever. There's some... Like, there was one that I got from there originally that I'd probably take back, and it's called The Beautiful Mind, and it's like the book-slash-transcript from the movie or whatever. Um, but a lot of the books that I have are more newer ones, so I would rather take them to one of the ones that are closer around here. Oh, and then there's that also, like, Uzaku or Ukazu or something like that, whatever the thing is. It's another used bookstore. Um, you could take it to there. But yeah, I would rather take it to one of them, because they're closer, and there's a better chance of them having the books that I want, which I'm look for them, I'm looking for the Amanda Ashley ones, because I love her writing so much. I've got 11 of her books. I had 12, but one turned out to be a duplicate, even though the cover was, like, totally different on both of them. So I picked out the one that looked better, because the other one, like, the older one, there's, like, this weird-looking guy that's, like, staring you down on there, and then there's, like, this other guy, or maybe it could have been him, I don't know, that's, like passionately embracing a woman on it. And I'm just like, this is awkward. I don't like that because he's staring at you and it looks creepy. So I kept the other one. But I love Amanda Ashley. She writes Vampire Harlequin and I love it. But yeah, <laughs> I just choked on air. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I should probably go stop choking on air. Well, that was fun. I had meant to do stuffs and ended up getting called group pulled into a group call with or group chat and then call with a bunch of awesome people including Mr. Creepypasta so that's pretty epic and awesome and yeah now that it's late I think I need to go to bed because I'm really tired so I hope you all have a wonderful night slash morning slash whatever it is wherever you are and I'll see you all tomorrow good night
I'd lie for a thousand days, keep it bright, your soul burning through the haze, in a fight, our love will break through this maze.